G'day guys, today we're going to try and show you how to make some uh, cheap and easy spinner lures. Uh, these are really good for trout, redfin perch, um, they do alright on saltwater fish too. Uh, just make sure you use the good uh, stainless components so they don't rust out too quick. Anyway, stick around. Alright, so what do we need? So as far as components go, uh, it's a really good idea to get yourself a selection of spinner blades. Um, this is sort of our go-to kit uh, for the most dominant ones that we generally make. Um, so most of our favourites are in here, but we've just got some Colorado blades. Um, we've got some French blades in a couple of different sizes. We've got some little helicopter type ones, some willow blades. Um, there's heaps more different ones available on the market, guys. Just here's some uh, funky coloured Colorados as well to mix it up a bit. So with the blade, uh, you also want some clevises or clevises, depending on what country you're from. Uh, so we've got some small ones, some mediums and some large, just to make sure we cover most of the bases. Uh, and then ideally you want to decorate it with some beads. So these are sort of our, this is our go-to kit, like I said. So, you know, we've got some sort of, I don't know what, what you call these. They're kind of a, uh, like a holographic type bead, some clear beads. Uh, these are part of our witchetty body grub selection. Um, you can just use normal craft beads. Here's some purple 6mm or 5mm ones. Uh, here's some multicolored ones that make for some good lures as well. Uh, and we've also got a whole bunch uh, with the eyes painted on them. You're also going to need some wire forms. Uh, these are ones that we've made previously. If you're not sure how to make them, uh, you can check out a video that we posted up not long ago. Um, or they're pretty easy to buy from lure shops and lure making supplies and stuff as well. Uh, we also like to have some... Uh, really small metal beads kicking around um these are either like a silver alloy type bead or a brass bead these are really good for putting each side of the uh the clevises uh on the lures um you also need some sort of weight so uh, as you can see on the left hand side we've got some metal beads um which work really well if you have a couple on there they're a really good weight they come in about four or five grams um, you can get specifically made um, lure weights in the middle, down the bottom there, the brass ones. Uh, or we've also got some metal beads up the top, which I find look a little bit nicer. Uh, or you can just use straight up lead sinkers as well, or tungsten sinkers, whatever you prefer. Uh, and as far as tools go, generally you can get away with the three uh, main ones. So a decent pair of pliers, some side cutters, and then some jewellery pliers. There's no real uh, absolute rhyme or reason to this, so basically you can be as creative or as basic as you like. Um, these particular lures that we just showed you at the start are actually going to a good friend of ours, uh, Eric, from uh, Eric Off Track. We'll link up his uh, YouTube channel down below. He's actually requested a something yellow, so uh, we've sort of gone with a, a bit of a bumblebee type theme. Um, you see that I've laid it out before I've hooked it all up just to see what it looks like. So we've got our wire form. We've got one of those small metal beads, like I said, um, before on each side of our clevis going to a yellow blade. Uh, just a black head with an eye, some yellow beads, a little bit of weight, and then one of those silver beads to finish off. So from here, I'm really happy with how that looks. From here, we basically just feed them on in the same order just like so what I might do is I might do this and then come back in a second this is what uh, this is what it looks like all done up uh, on the wire form anyway so we're actually we're really happy with that we're gonna go ahead and finish it off so from here it's really really simple steps all you need to do is basically Finish off with another one of these loops. Where are we? There's the camera. Finish off with another one of these loops. Um, generally, I like to set it back a little bit. If you set it too close, oh, sorry, wrong way. If you set it too close, what happens is this is all tight and then your clevis and your blade won't free spin. So I normally like to set it back about four or five, maybe six or seven millimeters. 
Okay, that seems like a really good spot. And just like in our wire form video, started off with a bit of a kink. I'm trying to, sorry guys, I'm trying to work this in with the camera angle for you. Finish it off with the loop. Might need to just give it a bit more of a kink. Finish it off with a loop, just like that. And then close her off with a couple of wraps around the main shaft and just be careful like i said you're only going to need about two or three wraps just be careful not to bring it all the way up to that bottom bead because you do want to have a little bit of leeway and a little bit of give in order to allow that blade to free spin so we'll just trim off the excess that was a really bad loop normally they're almost a perfect circle and i'll just try and fix that up it's me trying to show off for the camera there we go that's better all right, looks a bit better. And as you can see, that blade's not having any issues with tightness or anything, so that's pretty cool. Really easy to finish from here. Um, you can, some people actually will put a uh, treble hook directly into that loop while you're tying it. Uh, I don't always like to do that because um, I find if anything happens to that hook, if it rusts out or straightens out, it's a bit of a bit of a write-off for the lure. Um, what I like to do is I like to just get a treble and then connect it via a, uh, a split shot, uh, sorry, a um, split ring. So, yeah, there's our bumblebee. I think it looks good. Hopefully it does the damage on some Canberra trout. Before we pack up, I thought I'd quickly just whip up another couple um, and just show you guys that you can be as creative as you want. So. You see this one here, we've gone with a real gold theme. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll soon find out. So we've got a smaller gold blade, same little beads uh, each side of our clevis. Uh, we've got the gold brass weight, uh, as well as the metal beads, and then a gold eye. This one here is a variant of our really popular witchy grub, uh, or body grub one that we sell heaps of. Um, we've used a lead sinker as the weight for this one, a white blade, standard setup and then just some white uh these are like a rubber clay type bead so they're a little bit heavier as well this one here was just me messing around i really wanted to use those purple beads they're like a really translucent bead they're really nice purple eye a couple of little tibetan silver uh beads as well for a bit of weight and then just a standard french blade so uh i'll quickly put those together and through the power of editing they're all finished um, they even found some uh, dressed trebles on there as well. So, like I said earlier, um, they're really easy to make. Um, you can be as creative as you like. You can be as basic as you like. There's no real rule or rhythm to it. Uh, sometimes a fish will smash them. Sometimes they won't. Um, and you just got to find what works in your area. This particular batch is going off to our good friend Eric uh, in Canberra. Uh, he's a fellow YouTuber. We've known him for 20 years. 20 odd years um but he's got an awesome channel called eric off track um head on over if you like all things outdoors he uh he, he goes to some amazing places um goes bushwalking uh demonstrates uh various bush skills uh camping it, it's really really interesting to watch unfortunately he doesn't catch a hell of a lot of fish so that's where we're hoping the fishing guru uh, care package here might be able to help out but uh, we'll soon find out I suppose but yeah thanks for watching guys hopefully that helps and uh, happy fishing cheers